guys, welcome back to an episode of 12 Inch Figure Fanatic. Today is a very exciting episode for me. I have been looking forward to this figure for quite some time, ever since it was initially announced. I, I was just tingling with anticipation. And this is the Hot Toys Back to the Future Doc Brown Deluxe version. Uh, we're gonna open this up, see what it's all about. There's a lot of tiny accessories that comes with it. And uh, we're also gonna do a side-by-side -side with a custom that I've had for a while and see how they compare. And I'm also gonna make a few uh, notes along the way because this, there's been a lot of buzz around this figure. And not all of it, definitely not all of it was positive. Let's take a closer look. All right, so the, uh, the box is pretty basic. There's not much to it. Um, not not elaborate like the old Hot Toys boxes used to be, but uh, that's a bygone era. They were also, figures were cheaper back then as well. All right, it's got a slip with the, uh, the readout from inside the DeLorean. And look at this, wow, we got a lot going on here. All right, let's start with the basic figure. Okay. All right, so uh, the suit is pretty interesting. Uh, it's You'll see in the custom I have, the, the custom they actually use the material that the suit would have been made out of. This is just a, a, a cloth suit um, versus the, you know, what you would expect from a, uh, a hazmat suit. And some of you know what that material is, some of you may not, it's hard to describe, but it's got like a papery, te shiny texture to it. Um, this is just a cloth material and um, it's also fit quite loosely. Um, you, you might almost have to, if you're putting it on display, um, pin it back just to take away some of that, some of that, uh, loose fitting material. Um, so this is, looks like screen printed. It's not some kind of, uh, adhesive decal of some kind. And... Underneath, you've got his uh, you know, Hawaiian shirt that he wore, uh, T-shirt underneath that. Let's take this uh, paper out. So the first point of contention here, and uh, a lot of the negative feedback about this figure before it even uh, got released was the fact that they all they did was recycle the head sculpt from the previous Doc Brown figure. And we'll do a side by side so you can see what we're talking about here. Because I have, I have that figure as well from Back to the Future 2. And um, I'll show you that they are identical. And a lot of complaints were, why couldn't you create a new head sculpt for this figure? Um, is it critical? No. Would it have been nice? Sure. Um, it would have been nice to have a different e expression other than this, you know, somebody just put a thumb up my butt expression. But um, I'm, not, I'm not making a big deal out of it like some folks are. Uh, so the shoes, I believe, to be film accurate, they had a, a white Nike symbol on them. Um, but just like the Marty McFly figure, they had to uh, refrain from using that symbol, obviously, because they didn't get the licensing or authorization to do it. But you can get aftermarket uh, decal kits online to enhance that, make it more screen accurate. So it's it's got um, it's got a little bit of a thickness to the the body as well. They used a it feels like a muscular body underneath. Yeah, the the thighs are quite thick, you know, more than typical figures, but um, it's it's got the usual dexterity. Um, oh, let's see. So I'm gonna have to investigate this a little bit further. So the arms do move; they're just very tough to move. Um, let's take a look at what else we have here. All right, his little pocket protector with pens inside, and the pens are not removable. 
Two extra hands. And as we know from Hot Toys, you know, the, the attention to detail, they did um, do some detailing in the paint job on the hands. Um, I always appreciate that they do that. Most, most figure makers don't even bother with that. Got some documents, it looks like. Okay, this is a pad. It's, some, it's interesting. It's got the lined paper in there. Nice details there. We've got, looks like a, a map. And a few documents. Material safety data sheet. And this blank, uh, I guess it's a folder. So you could put it all in there, I imagine. Okay. This looks a little delicate, but it's the remote control for the DeLorean. Um, yeah, it looks like, uh, it looks like the, the, so one thing, um, I'm a little critical of is all the wiring is sculpted and it, it looks obviously sculpted. Uh, it's, it's not a fine sculpt. Um, so you'll see on the on the custom that I have the the wiring is real and it makes a difference I'll show you that in a little bit but otherwise it looks it looks very nice um, now another thing on my custom is the antenna retracts this one doesn't um, it has some flex to it so it's, it doesn't seem like it's gonna break too easily I appreciate that that's a good choice of plastics there um, but I imagine that these, um, these buttons here, yeah, these buttons seem delicate and they did break off on my custom and it got lost. So, but this is, you know, this is a critical piece here to have. Very nice. All right. I've got some watches here. As we recall from the film, he's wearing quite a few watches. Got the stopwatch. And another stopwatch. And there's, you know, detailed readouts on these. I appreciate that. Okay, I think this is his um, tape recorder. I think he was recording uh, his, his movements for his experiment. Looks like a little pouch. A little clip on there. Got his base. Dr. Emmett Brown, I love my logoed bases with name plaques. I love it. Hot Toys always does it for me. All right, so, hmm. Okay, so this was the other complaint that people had. Um, you, you can't tell that well from the video, but so this is plastic on the corners here, on all the corners, right? This piece right here is plastic, right here. But the rest is just cardboard. It's not sculpted at all. It just looks like there's some variation in texture. The stickers are also part of the print. This is all just printed on. And, you know, at least, at least the handles are there. Let's see, do they come out? No, they're just sculpted. But, okay, 
So here we go. So we got some foam at the top here, and then we've got the little vials of, what is it called? Plutonium, I believe it was. And it, yeah, it doesn't look like they come out. So they don't come out at all. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't think it's a big deal, but a lot of people were quite upset saying that they cut corners, Hot Toys cut corners by making this cardboard and not sculpted, entirely sculpted plastic. I just appreciate that it was included. And then we've got some stickers in there. I don't know what that plastic piece is. We'll take a closer look when I set it all up. Then we got his clipboard. And then we got a bunch of tools. And it looks like most of these will go on the utility belt. So we've got this leatherette type utility belt. Here's a, a separate plutonium. So I suppose if you wanted to make it on display have one of them out or you could insert it in. So this is the actual plutonium. I think this is the protective casing. But um, we open this back up. So we just uh, insert right in there with the rest of the guys. That's pretty much it. All right, so yeah, a few standard tools. Um, Let's see, do these actually open up? No, that's just sculpted. So I don't know if you guys remember way back the Terminator 2 figure, the pliers actually worked. And part of the reason I guess is because you used them to pull the, um, the chip out of the Terminator's skull, um, which I thought was kind of cool. Tiny little clothespin and roll of tape. Good detailing, right? Little clip. Yeah, so a lot of little fine details. I'm probably gonna have to review some some reference photos of the figure to figure out where all these pieces go, unless, let's see. It's got instructions, so let's see if it tells us exactly where everything goes. I doubt it. They never go into that kind of detail. It's usually just how to bend and not bend the figure. All right, so. Okay, got it. All right. Okay, so it does give some indication of how to put this all together. That's good. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna do side by side with my custom. All right, so here's the two figures side by side. To the left is my custom and to the right is the new Hot Toys one that I just reviewed. Um, quite a few differences between them. Um, right off the bat, I mean, so like I mentioned with the with the suit, this is that sort of papery material that real hazmat suits are made of, and that's what this one is made with. Uh, it doesn't look as clean as that one, um, but it, it, it's the correct material at least. And the head sculpt is actually didn't come with the original custom. This is a custom on top of a custom. And I got this from a, a painter in um, Russia, actually. And it just it had, the fact that it had rooted hair and it, the, the paint job on it was, was a, a lot better than the one that it originally came with at the time. Um, something like this would have been a nice, you know, a nice thing for Hot Toys to have done rather than that blank stare here. Uh, now, I'm gonna bring in the Back to the Future 2 version, and we're going to do a side-by-side -side here so you can see what we're talking about. So, there is no difference between the sculpts, right? Now, some some of the complaints were not only did they use the, the, the same head sculpt, but it was, film inaccurate because if you follow the films, um, 
him in Back to the Future 2 was supposed to be much older. Um, well, it depends on how you look at it. So uh, when they landed in the DeLorean in the alleyway of the Hill Valley circa 2015, he uh, took off a, a layer of like plastic fake skin and it, it, it had, was supposed to have aged him. And Marty kind of looks at him with this like weird stare, like, okay, I don't even notice the difference. So underneath it was, was Doc Brown circa 1985, all right? So keep that in mind. Now, this doc was circa 1985. This was the beginning of the first film when the DeLorean was revealed and what it was capable of. So the age between these two figures should technically be the same. So those folks who were complaining that it, it needed to be a different uh, uh, age, no, incorrect. But one other point of contention that I'll have is, so as we can see from the instructions, it comes with the pocket watch, the stopwatch for uh, putting around uh, Einstein's neck. But as you can see here, it says sold separately. So when they released the the new figures for the Back to the Future line, they included Einstein with uh, uh, Marty, but it's the same Marty that they initially released from the first film. So in order to get Einstein, you actually had to get Marty all over again and figure out what you were gonna do with the first one that you bought, either uh, relist it or keep both, I don't know. Um, and I didn't like that. I thought Hot Toys you know, did, did a dirty deed. I thought that they should have included Einstein with all of the docs, this doc specifically, because if you look at the beginning of the film, it came, it, it, the dog was with, Einstein was with, uh, with uh, Doc Brown uh, and the DeLorean, all right? So why wouldn't he be with the figure? It, it makes more sense to have the Einstein with Doc Brown than it does with Marty, but they strategic, I think they strategically did that so they could charge more money and make a lot more money off those folks who were desperate to have Einstein. But I showed them because I 3D printed my own and painted it. So this is just a, a, a resin 3D print, you can see at the bottom there. Um, but I even printed the stopwatch and included the digital readout on there. It's a sticker. So, um, and if those are those of you who are interested in getting your own Einstein, if you want this, uh, I sell them on my Etsy shop at Lozone. That's the name of my Etsy shop, L-O-Z-O-N-E. Um, I sell them for, I think, 40 or 45 bucks. Uh, that's printed out and painted for you. Um, but it's obviously a nice addition. And I have the DeLorean um, in my office downstairs and to have Einstein sitting on the driver's seat like in the film, um, just completes the whole display. You really, you really can't do it justice without having Einstein. So if you don't wanna buy Marty all over again, if you have the first one already, then um, this is one option for you. Um, but let's take a look at some other, other points here. So my custom came with these framed pictures of all of you know, scientists from different eras, um, but it also included this. Um, and this is important for two reasons. Um, one, because he used it in uh, the beginning of the film. He took it off and revealed his identity to Marty, who showed up uh, to the parking lot of the, the mall. But also, later on, Marty uses this um, to, to scare, uh, who was it? Yeah, scare his father, his young, young father, to uh, convince him to do something. I don't remember. Um, and then also, you, you have the Nike symbol on the custom shoes, once again, because, you know, it's a custom. They don't care about licensing. And on these, that symbol does not appear, so you would have to do it yourself. Other than that, uh, the, looks like the feet aren't even attached. Okay. Um, the tools nice enough obviously the the tool belt on on this one i mean it's when you have all the tools in there it really is outstanding they paid every attention to detail um the paint the painting on on the details of each of the uh tools you know um yeah just a, a very good job there 
let's look at the cases. All right, so this one, it is sculpted. So this is all, you know, raised and textured. And when you open the case, it stands on its own. But this case, there's this little piece, to, piece of pla clear plastic wedge um, that comes with it. So it looks like this, it came with the stickers. And you actually have to wedge this in there between the foams in order to have it propped open. Um, I mentioned earlier that the antenna comes out with my custom. That's a nice feature. I like that. There's no reason why Hot Toys couldn't have done that. And then it comes with these gloves. Um, you can switch, up, switch out the hands if you want. Um, other than that, no, nothing really too big to note. Um, I think for the custom I paid, uh, God, this was several years ago, but I want to say 325 and then the head sculpt I paid, I think 100 and, 120 or 150. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, let's give my final, final thoughts on this. So I'm going to rate this one a, a nine out of 10. There's a lot of fine details. I appreciated that they had step-by-step -step instructions on how to put it all together so that it was uh, you know, positioned correctly according to um, the film. Um, but there were some shortcuts on this box. You know, I am with everybody else on, they didn't need to recycle the same head sculpt. Um, and the antenna doesn't retract. So those are the only real big things. And, and don't tease me with with the uh, stopwatch and not include Einstein. I'm really, I mean, that's not a reflection on the figure. It's just, you know, me being pissed at Hot Toys in general over that dirty deed. Um, but yeah, nine out of 10, I think is a, is a solid score for this figure. If you've got any Hot Toys figures for uh, the Back to the Future line, I definitely recommend you add this one to it. And I've got something special to show you right now. All right, so here's what I wanted to show you. This is how much of a uh, fan of Back to the Future I am. So a while back while I was deployed, um, I was very bored and just wanted to do arts and crafts to keep myself busy. I had access to a printer, glue, and scissors. And I made the original version of this. And since then I've scaled it down and reinforced uh, the structures uh, a lot better. Um, but this is a 164th scale or N scale of the Hill Valley town from Back to the Future. And I painstakingly watched the film and looked at photos to get all of the details. There's the theater that uh, the DeLorean drove into. And of course the clock tower. The gas station. The diner. So this is not completely finished. This, you know, believe it or not, working through many hours of the day every day, it takes me about two weeks, just two weeks to, to knock one of these out. Um, I'm still waiting on some landscaping materials from Amazon to finish up uh, the gravel here and then uh, all the trees and bushes and plants throughout the entire town. Um, but yeah, and then I have this little plaque here. So this is actually on my Etsy shop as well. Um, it's going for $2,200. They're custom made. As, as they're ordered, I, I start putting them together. Um, that's out of the price point for many of you, but for the ultimate Back to the Future fan, um, the, the, the one that I, I made here, this is going to a huge Back to the Future fan in uh, England. And uh, I'm sure he's gonna take very good care of it and put it on display proudly. Anyways, see you guys all next time.